NCAA championships. Stearns now. The confidence uh, to play out of the back there. Minogue, Minogue looking around going, hey, where's the rest of my team? As I'm pressing. Michaela Harvey. When you and I were down doing the SEC championship in Orange Beach, Alabama, and Michaela Harvey played a big part off the bench in that tournament for Texas A&M. She did. They've been so pleased with her as a freshman. Lost her to some injuries earlier in the season, but got her back now. Straight lays down the header. Yeah, with a long touch here. It's jet fuel down to the back. Virginia now. In a good position here. Shot over the top. Whipped inside. Alexis Schaffer from Cary, North Carolina. Another flank midfield threat for Virginia. This one off the bench in Schaffer. But it all started from their center back. Saw it coming forward, finding her wide. And then a nice little move just to get around. And in, in my opinion, too easy to get around uh, Texas A&M. But Schaffer with a clear opportunity that you just need to get on frame. You know, we talked to the head coach of Virginia, Steve Swanson, yesterday. He had so many wonderful things to say about center back Emily Sonnet. She's got four goals, three assists, just a commanding presence at the back, but also somebody who used to play in midfield and loves to join in the attack. And said she, she will be on the full women's national team one day, I think. She's that good. And that's what I love about this College Cup. You get a glimpse at all these, these future stars coming through. Again, it's a 13th minute goal from Mackenzie Doniak. With beautiful pass from Morgan Bryan. That is the difference. It's Virginia 1, Texas A&M 0. A&M still trying to find their rhythm, though they have threatened at times, but they, they seem a little yeah. uncomfortable and, here. And, and, you know, with, with having so many seniors in their first ever college cup and knowing that if this is their moment, it's going to be now, we asked them yesterday if it was too much pressure that it's your final chance, you know it's got to happen now. And, and so I'll be interested to see their reaction in the second half as well, to, to beam down a goal, not having much of the game. Can they stay positive and energetic, chasing a lot of the game? Yeah, Virginia looks just that slight bit more comfortable here, but you gotta hand it to G. Guerrero. Did not waste any time getting on some young freshmen and younger players off the bench to try and change a problem that was occurring in midfield. And when I asked A&M about the pressure of being a senior and making it and setting a standard for the program. Shea Groom had a great response. She said, nah, the pressure's off us. Getting here was the pressure. We're not done yet, she said. Harvey Groom. Uh, a has got some battling experience here, but right now Virginia sharper to the ball here. Donnie at top of the box. So much has been made about her goal scoring exploit. Steve Swanson said she's very much so improved her first touch in and around the box. And here comes the ever dangerous Schaffer. Squares it to the near post. Great defending by Shea Groom, the attacking midfielder, to get there first for AM. Here is Minogue. Kutz is on with big space here. She will need support. He's got Harvey inside. Cuts inside herself. And boy, that has gotten opened up in midfield here. There's that counter-attacking threat again for A&M. But Schaffer having her way on that outside right now with Edwards. Yeah, she's been a good substitution, hasn't she? She's got fresh legs. You come in like that. Edwards already having to navigate that whole flank. Sophomore from Cary, North Carolina, Alexis Schaffer.
Edwards, Mallerby trying to turn out of there and does against Morgan Bryan. And unfortunately, Moeller could not hold it. Moeller from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Five assists on the air, has been to some of the under 20 national team camps. She will be back next year, just a junior. Straight to take the free kick. A little bit of rain falling here and some very ominous clouds in and around Boca Raton. Shot off the top, it's 1-1. One, one. What a hit. The goal scorer, none other than senior Kelly Minogue. Number 18 for her. And the rain coming down, as you mentioned, Glenn, it's a little bit slippery, but a and m so good on those second balls, and Minogue making no mistake about that. And this is why they kept her on the field. They took her out of midfield, but put her up front because of that reason alone. Just a half chance that she hits sweetly, and it can skip on that rain right into the back of the net. 32nd minute, Kelly Minogue producing like she has so many times for Texas A&M. And here's a game that's fair to say they've been outplayed, but with one spectacular moment here, have tied it right back up. And how big is that for momentum? Because you don't want to go in to that halftime thinking, oh, goodness, we're down, we've been chasing. This Virginia team seems confident and strong. What a lift that will be for AM. and You can hear the, the crowd responding, their 12th man that they're so proud of in there. Senior from McKinney, Texas. AM Trent fans traveling well. Trying to make the uh, FAU Stadium their own. Schaffer. Played it to Latsko. Cola Prico spins out of there beautifully. Chance to counter maybe again if AM can get some players in front of the ball here and get it out wide. They have found some confidence here. Malaby, Brinson. And at least it's too early. Kelly Minogue in the 32nd minute tying it up after Mackenzie Doniak had given Virginia the lead in the 13th minute. Glenn Davis alongside Julie Foudy. Hope you're enjoying the NCAA Women's College Cup semifinal number one between Texas A&M and Virginia. Valuable minutes from number 10, Stephanie Mallory from Temecula, California. Brinson will get there. It'll be a corner for Texas A&M. So great work from Bianca Brinson. Here's another look at the goal. You're going to see Orton go up. The defender for Virginia and just unable to clear it wide. One of the first rules for all defenders is high and wide. And Minogue there to make sure they pay for that one. It's pretty remarkable how quickly can she controlled it and hit it. And here's Minogue off the corner towards the six. Harvey, crossing opportunity for Minogue, who's still out wide. Out, out, out. Oh, and unfortunately, miss hit it with Kuntz and Brinson at the back post. NCAA Women's College Cup presented by Northwestern Mutual. Proud to be an official corporate partner of the NCAA. And in part, by Burger King. Two for five dollars menu, mix and match two large premium sandwiches for just five dollars. Virginia substitution. Into the game, number 20, Campbell Millar. Replacing number seven, Kylie Torres.
Less than 10 minutes here in the first half. Minogue again. Brinson on the run. Coming in there to win the header. So this is interesting. They took Coons out, a and M. Back to that in a second. Here's Morgan Bryan against Megan Strait. Two All-Americans straight will concede the corner to the U.S. national team up and comer. Took Coons out their center forward. It looks like they're switching to a 4-4-2 with Harriman coming in for A&M going straight on when she stepped onto the field. None other than Morgan Bryan stepping right on her man marking possibly. We will see. Danielle Colaprico again had a huge match against UCLA. In their quarterfinal match, when they defeated the defending national champions two to one, Colaprico off the corner to the back post. Jordan Day will handle it. And this is where you want Jordan Day on your line. Look at how that—that's bending in, solid hands. That's what she's known for. Very clean, especially with that range starting to come down. That is not easy. Mallerby, Harvey. How quickly she can get turned. And she's brought down from behind. Morgan Bryan caught her. Michaela Harvey showing uh, some wonderful ethic in midfield. Number 77 for Texas A&M. Less than eight minutes left. Only a freshman enrolled early in the spring to acclimate herself to not only the college game but the college life. Harvey, ball just glued to her feet, took off the physical challenge. Moeller now, Shea Groom, back to Moeller. So now, A&M after this goal has gained some confidence, changing themselves tactically. Here is Shea Groom at the top of the box, the shot is blocked. Mallerby now. Overlapping run from Edwards. She'll whip it into the box, over the top. Minogue in there again, Julie. And a good response by AM. Confidence shifter in that goal. And now you're seeing it on the field. They're starting to ping it around. The two substitutes, Mallerby and Harvey, as you mentioned, Glenn, making a big difference just holding the ball. Minogue. Touch went a little bit too long, broken up. And number 16, Emily Sonic. So now AM with some pressure of their own. Good switch of play from Virginia. Brinson coming back defensively. It's Malibu. We'll make that shade room now. Brinson. I think that's a good switch too by Guerreri because they were having so many problems chasing those four in the midfield. And now it seems that AM much more settled with Harriman in that holding spot, picking up Morgan. Yeah, she doesn't seem to be getting on the ball as much here the last 10 to 12 minutes. Good look there at Morgan Bryan. Straight drives it in. Second balls is a forte of Texas A&M. That's how they got their first goal in this one. It'll be a free kick for Junior. They don't forget the coverage of the 2014 NCAA Women's College Cup. It's going to be right here, and it'll be right on ESPNU from FAU Stadium. Tonight at 7.30 though, a winner go home semifinal game for the final spot in the title game. Sunday at one again, the two teams will play for the national championship. Semifinal tonight at 7.30. And championship Sunday, both presented by Northwestern Mutual. Colaprico now, Doniak, Brian. 
The trio of stars knocking it around here at the top of the box. This is good combination play. Cox will drive a ball into the near post. Miss hit clear, skips across the face of goal. It's still Virginia. Colaprico. Lee Edwards with some good solid defending and does not get the run of the green there as it curls out for a corner for what, Virginia. What a nice ball by Cox, especially with the field being wet with the rain coming down, whipping it in. Good possession by Virginia on that sequence. Cola Prico to take the corner of the box is loaded up. It's driven in its left. Bit of a dummy run there. Little improvisation off the corner from Virginia. Brinson will clear it. Less than four minutes left here in the first half. 1-1 score line. Doniak for Virginia, Minogue for Texas A&M. Colaprico driving towards the top of the box. Still Colaprico saved Jordan Day. Nobody picked her up was allowed to get a shot off Jordan Day with great safe hands, clean handling from the goalkeeper. And Cola Prico, so often the provider, she's creating options that I think they are just waiting for her to dish. No one's stepping to her, she just keeps going. Hits it well. Also, good hold there. Well, she may be a distributor with 18 assists, as Julie mentioned, but she's also got six goals. Senior from Freehold, New Jersey. She is the complete package in midfield. Mallerby, it looks like, has come off for Texas A&M. Into the game number 19, Grace Wright. So Grace Wright, who has represented Ireland, is on for Texas A&M. Here's Donnie. Tried to split two. Grace Wright was in there. Cox knocks it inside. And Virginia need to switch it and do. Brian. For those quick feet. Donny at top of the box. Brian lobs it towards the back post. It's still Virginia. They're going to earn a corner. Coming up at halftime, we'll take a look ahead to semifinal number two, and it is a good one. Florida State will take on Stanford, then ESPN W College Cup snapshots. These are fun. Highlights, stats, and analysis with Julie Fowdy. Cola Prico off the corner. To the back post. The header. Jordan Day got a hand on it. It's pounded in at the back post. The goal scorer is Emily Sonnet, the center back, who picks up number five on the year. It is two to one Virginia on the stroke of halftime. And you're gonna see Ornu on this back post, wide open, check her out. She actually puts her hand up asking for the ball. No one from A&M picks her up. She's there to send it across and Sonnet just there for the reaction. Jordan Day getting a hand on it, but once again, A&M unable to pick up these open players. Too much space for Virginia, and they punish him for it. Well, it again goes back to how dangerous they have been off corner kicks this year. Set pieces playing a part in it. It's two to one Virginia. And here comes A&M, we're gonna try to make a push here. Brinson. Going herself at the top of the box. Harvey, swing and a miss. And knocked over the halfway line. And Virginia's gonna get possession of this. One minute. Through the great work of Latsko. And Latsko now. Cleared by A&M, who we're hoping to get into that locker room at a 1-1 draw. Doniak, Colaprico. A game that has ebbed and flowed in pressure, in possession, 
It was all Virginia for a good portion of the first half, and AM took it over. Buoyed on by the Kelly Minogue goal. But Emily Sonnet has struck here late in the 44th minute to give Virginia a two to one lead. And this will do it. Julie, some of your thoughts here on the first half. A&M responding really well, and here's another opportunity for them to reassess when they get in that locker room. One of the things I think they'll have to talk about is how to be cleaner when they are on that corner kick because there's too many gaps, too many wide open players, and Virginia able to punish them on that one. Now there's your goal scorer, Emily Sonnet, picking up goal number two for Virginia. Mackenzie Doniak picking up the first in the 13th minute. Let's go back to uh, the goal that gave Virginia the two to one lead here from Emily Sonnet. And you're gonna see the Jordan Day save and Sonnet just framing up that goal beautifully. There for any rebound, any second chance. They had two Virginia players there. But really the issue is that back post wide open for Virginia. Virginia with a two to one lead. Let's go down now to the coach of Virginia, Steve Swanson. Steve, thank you very much. Initial thoughts here on the first half. Well, I think we did well to get the two goals. I still think, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're giving the ball away a little too easily. I think there's a lot more time and space than, than, than we seem to think there is. And uh, we've got a little more time to play. We just seemed a little in a hurry. So um, I think we, we've always wanted to play a fast game, but I think there's space there. We just gotta, we gotta use it a little better than we are. Coach, it seemed that Texas A&M put four in the midfield to deal with um, Morgan and, of course, Calaprico. Any adjustments from your side for the second half? You know, I, I, I don't think so, um, at least not right now. I, I think we're we're getting balls in good positions and, and we're, we're, we have people open. We just seem to be missing the mark a little bit, you know? So I don't know if it's a slick surface or, or something we gotta get used to a little bit, but we just tend to, I, th I think we just were in a little bit of, too much of a hurry there at times. So I think we can get it in there attacking third and we've shown when we get it in there, we can get corners. We, we, we got a great goal. The first goal was a great goal um, and we showed a little bit of patience uh, you know, before we, we played that ball in. So I think that's the kind of soccer we got to play, just, just, especially in terms of them. You know, they're good on the counter and, and they're, they're direct. So we got to be just, we got to be cognizant of that. We can have the ball and take care of the ball. I think that's going to help us. Steve, thank you very much for your time. Best of luck in the second half. Thank you. Steve Swanson, the head coach of Virginia, also uh, doubles as the U.S. Women's National Team assistant. Virginia, a two to one lead. Doniak and Sonic, the goal scorers. Bass Pro Shop. Palm tree is a great symbol of the state of Florida right here. It is raining now and uh, there are storms in the area. Virginia with a two to one lead here at halftime. You're watching the 2014 Women's College Cup presented by Northwestern Mutual. We welcome you back. Glenn Davis alongside 99 World Cup winner Julie Fowdy. Oh, let's talk a little bit about this first half. It had tactical changes. It had a lot of Morgan Bryan. It had a lot of Shea Groom. Had everything. It did, and and it had a comeback fight by A and M getting back into the game after Virginia was controlling that first bit of it. That will be the challenge again for them in the second half because I think that's a goal that A and M could have prevented if they had been tighter on the mark on those set pieces. But Virginia overall looking good when they can keep the ball. When they're in possession mode as they were on that first goal, they're knocking it around. Morgan Bryan has space and time and she just nicely picks out Doniak who puts it down low for Jordan Day. Can't get a hand on it. And look how A&M on this one, they adjust for that second ball. This is what they do so well is they get in a position to get that second ball. Minogue knows I have half a window here. I'm going to put it away. They're back in the game. And then this happens on the back post. Yodonu wide open and Sonnet there to finish it off. That coming in the 44th minute after AM had taken a little bit back 
uh, the momentum side of things. Here's uh, first half stats. Take a bite out of these. And it's pretty even, which you can see. Virginia and A&M, and it's going to be a battle, I think, in that midfield if Virginia can spray it and get those flank players a little more involved. Nine corners indicative of Virginia getting to the end line here today. They are dangerous off the corner. They get one there. Two to one. We'll take a look at some images coming back. Welcome back to the FAU Stadium here in Boca Raton, Florida. Virginia with a 2-1 to lead over Texas A&M. Let's go now to the Texas A&M head coach, G. Guerrero. G, uh, just give us a little insight into what your message was here in the locker room at halftime. Well, we didn't think we played very well. Um, you know, there were times when, uh, you know, we, we put things together. We started to get a little bit of possession to it. I thought it was a great finish by uh, by um, Minogue on the goal. But uh, generally, you know, we feel pretty good because we're only down 2-1 to one and we didn't play very well. Now, granted, a lot of that was because Virginia was playing very well. Two really well-conceived goals by them, uh, but poor marking on, on us both times. What, what adjustments, Coach, are you going to make in this second half that you talked to him about as well? Well, we'll be bringing um, Michaela Harvey. I thought she, when she stepped on the field, I uh, thought that she did a great job as far as being able to help us get a little bit of rhythm. Uh, Minogue will come back in the midfield now. and you'll, So you see Minogue, uh, Harvey, and Groom in the midfield. We'll see if we can get a hold of the ball a little bit more and uh, and then be able to step forward. I thought Annie did a good job as far as targeting up and, and getting the ability for us to get the ball in the attack. Now let's see if we can maybe take advantage of, uh, of the midfield a little bit, get out of tight spaces, and be able to run at them. Coach, thank you very much for your time. Best of luck in the second half. Thanks, guys. G. Guerrero, the head coach of Texas a &M. Second half underway here. Great to catch up with G. Guerrero. He's fresh out of the locker room. Texas A&M in white, Virginia in the blue. 45 minutes to prove out your destiny here to get to the NCAA National Championship game on Sunday. Virginia starting the second half like they did the first. Rain pounding down here in Boca Raton. It's the first time Texas A&M has trailed at the half in the NCAA tournament. Colaprico gets it wide for Virginia. Minogue now. Kuntz, the tip of the spear here. Kuntz gets turned. Looking for support. Shea Groom now. Top of the box for AM. Lays it off. Brinson takes a touch, gets a shot off, parried over the top by Stern. So Texas AM breakout play nice there. And exactly what Coach Guerrero is going to want to see out of them. They get it to Kuntz, who holds it up. He finds their playmaker and Groom, and then they find Brinson wide. And those two, Brenton and Bailey, playing a little bit deeper, so it's almost like they have five in midfield. So critical critical for Coons to be able to hold that up to give him a little bit of time. And in this rain, you could see it coming down on Coach G. You are looking for all those second chances. It's going to be skippy. Minot clips it in. The header won by Virginia. It's actually Morgan Bryan winning the header. And here's Bryan. Donia. Played in the under-20 World Cup, scoring in the quarterfinal, Mackenzie Doniak. That has been a scoring machine, 20 goals on the year. 49 career goals at Virginia. Brian. Colaprico, Iordano now. Transfer from Vanderbilt. Colaprico again, switching the play. Harvey trying to get over. Brian, top of the box, shot took a deflection. Jordan Day will cover it for Texas A&M. Good switch of play by Colaprico for Virginia because it forces that outside back for Texas A&M to, to make a decision on that flank. Shifting them around, opening up those seams. Andy Kuntz is fouled. Kristen McNabb. She missed the College Cup last year, had an ACL injury, so big moment for her to be playing in this one. And this is a very similar spot to that set piece that led to a goal for AM. They're going to frame this one all over the place on that second ball with it being so wet. 
Muller takes it, lots of movement across the top of the box. Groom trying to shield it to get the throw, and AM will get the throw. Good look at Shea Groom, talented, first team All SEC, the SEC Offensive Player of the Year. And Brinson now setting up here for the long throw for Texas AM. Towards the near post. Steered back into the middle. Harvey's shot goes over the top. It'll be a goal kick, Virginia. 